Hello everybody, this is Julian from Julian Tech TM and I have here a one of a kind the blackest razor keyboard painted with Musso black paint that's right with Gateron black in V2 switches this time I've modded everything to make this the blackest of the black keyboard to ever exist it's also funny because it's on a keyboard from a RGB Empire brand Razor. But before I get into the journey of making this possible, let me share with you why I wanted to do this in the first place. Special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. More about Skillshare at the end of the video. I was very fascinated by the blackest black, Venta Black, that absorbs 99.965% of light. Only problem with Venta Black is that it's not a paint, it's actually a material. And not to mention, the price. So the next closest thing is Musso Black that can absorb 99.4% of light. Not the best, but still pretty good. So why a Razer keyboard? Because actually I have some sentimental value with this keyboard. I accidentally spilled coke and soup on this Razer keyboard three years ago. And don't ask me how it happened. It just happened, okay? Because of that, the LED on the keyboard was just not working right. And some keys were sticky and it was clearly quite I've always wanted to fix this keyboard but it was such a hurdle to learn how to. Especially when I wasn't doing tech full time at NOC. So I just forgot about it. Then six months ago, I started watching keyboard videos like Teha Types Tofu keyboard video. The expensive one, the shiny shiny one. Huh? <laughs> then I realized, oh my god, there are Singaporean keyboard YouTubers. Namely Squashy Boy and Hamaji Neo. So you might be asking, Julian, you say you found all this six months ago. Why now then you make this video? Well, it was no easy task to learn everything from scratch because I had lots to learn. And you might also ask, why don't I collab with other Singaporean YouTubers? Which I will say, I ask, but they no answer. You don't want my idea, never mind. Lah. My original idea. This one is, the, he used black 3.0. I'm using Musso Black. So it's the blackest. And also Razer. So let's get into how I customize this keyboard. We're going to start with one of the most difficult things I've ever done, desoldering. You see, the thing about me is that I have to learn things the hard way. I don't read things, I don't practice, I just do. Doing is the practice. And oh golly, was I in for a roller coaster ride. It was difficult because not only did I have to desolder my switches, which only had two pins, I had to desolder the RGB LED, which has four pins. So the first day of desoldering took me eight hours and I only removed 33 switches. Yes, I took eight freaking hours to remove 33 switches, which comes down to 50 minutes per switch. The next day, I bought a $250 desoldering gun that was super hard to find at the last minute. It worked very well at the start, then it clocked up. And learning to declock it took time. Then it clocked up again, and again, till I think I, I broke it. Yes, my newly bought pretty expensive desoldering gun. I forgot to mention that I also burned parts of my PCB soldering points. At this point, it already cost me $250 and 10 hours of my time and I was ready to give up. I honestly broke down. And I don't mean the cool guy one tear trickle down kind of break up the... <sighs> it was a full on breakdown like... <gasps> and after that, I fought through it and continue on working. I just wanted to prove to myself that I can push through in spite of all the problems. So I did, and I could feel myself understanding the PCB and the soldering iron better. My technique got better and better to the point I can do one RGB LED and one switch in less than five minutes. Be improvement from that 15 minutes per switch. I push on for another two hours with burns on the PCB and on my hands. I did it. I desoldered all the switches and LEDs off the PCB in 12 hours. 12 f***ing hours. Okay, let's move on. Next thing I had to do was cleaning. With anger! I used wet sandpaper to sand the surface of the keyboard case, which I did such a great job shooting this part. Maha! 
I sanded one key cap to test and found out it didn't look so good with the primer. Thank God, because sanding all those key caps would be a pain in my butthole. Next, I inserted a saute stick into the key cap so that I could avoid touching the key caps while I was painting it. And also so I could coat them as evenly as possible. Then it's just a matter of doing it 87 times for every single keycap. I also prepped the dining table with newspapers. My advice is if you're doing the paint job indoors, make sure it's ventilated. And make sure you have paint remover because when you do the spray painting, it will get to your floors. Confirm one. It's confirm one. Actually, my advice, don't do it indoor, do it outdoor. If you've got outdoor space, do it outdoor, really. I use a blower to blow any dust away. Then I use a plastic primer to coat the keycaps and keyboard case. You need to get a proper primer so that it will allow the paint to adhere better so that it doesn't chip away easily. Now we wait for the primer to dry. Next, I use my new airbrush to spray on the Musso black paint. Like I said before, I didn't practice airbrushing beforehand. I just watched a couple of YouTube tutorials and did it. Although this was not as hard as desoldering, my lack of understanding of the airbrush slowed down the painting process. The airbrush got clogged a couple of times before I fully understood how the damn thing worked. Turns out, I didn't water down the Musso Black paint enough. So the paint was too thick for the airbrush. If you're thinking of learning how to airbrush, I recommend watching people airbrush miniatures. They have lots of experience with airbrushing. The skills is a bit overkill for a keyboard, but it's very detailed. One problem with Musso Black is if I spray it on a keyboard, the keyboard becomes kind of unusable because the paint is not wear resistant. I wanted to spray a matte varnish on the keycaps, but I I realized it made it more grey than black. So I'm not gonna varnish for now. Because I want this to be the blackest keyboard ever. And doing the varnish wouldn't have the results. But after this, I do want to varnish the keyboard so that I can actually use it. And after 10 hours of airbrushing the keycaps one by one, with multiple coats, the results looks pretty damn good. Ashley calls them burn kebabs. Get it? Like kebabs. Okay, time to go back to soldering. But before that, the switches that I bought were, yes, Gateron Black Ink V2. It's an obvious choice. It looks so good. But the problem is, it has five pins. So a cutting I go, and another hour gone. But at this point, what's another hour, right? So although I burn and mess up some of the soldering points, I learned how to make a wire bridge. Or a switch bridge? I don't know what it's called. And I also learned how a keyboard is mapped out on a PCB, which was really interesting. Basically, I can rewire a switch and still have it have the same input. If you want to learn this, let me know so that I can make a separate video for this. Like, holy shit, this actually worked. By the way, I didn't realize there was such a thing as silicon wires. So I soldered normal wires on the PCB, which melted the rubber casing of the wire. But it worked, and I learned something new. Yay me. Then I did a final check to make sure all the keys were working. And one final touch, removing the tape. I'm only left with putting on the keycaps, and we are done. Put, 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 put. Four days and over 40 hours of work to get this beauty. This was really a roller coaster ride and I love the result. Even though this isn't perfect, the feeling of accomplishment is great. Feels even better than the first time I built a PC. I guess it was because of all the struggles I faced, but still I pushed through and managed to solve everything to produce this bad boy. If this video taught me one thing, it's that perseverance pays off. But why not I list out all the things that I learned for this video? Desoldering with a soldering iron. Desoldering with a desoldering gun. Understanding how a solder sucker works. Understanding how a desoldering gun works. A soldering iron can burn Understanding you. how an airbrush works. Declogging an airbrush. Learning about varnishes. Cleaning an airbrush. Understanding how a keyboard PCB works. Making a switch bridge or wire bridge. And patience. I learned to have lots of patience. And another big lesson that I learned is Price. Let's list out the price of this whole video, huh? Razer Black Widow Tournament Edition, $150. Soldering Station, $41.38. Engineer Solder Sucker, $36.90. Airbrush Kit, $59. Desoldering Gun, $250. Plastic Primer, $21.39. Musso Black Paint, 100 ml. 100 ml, $44.90. Gateron Black Ink V2. 90 switches, $107.10. Total cost of making this video, $673.77. If you're interested in any part of this and you want me to do a tutorial, do let me know in the comment section below. And I will do it for you. Uh, for you guys only, okay? Just for you. 
If you want to actually want to like go go learn yourself. What? But yes, I will probably not touch keyboards for a while unless the response for this video is good lah. Taking four days just to make a keyboard and let's not mention making this video is very time consuming. It feels great, but just so tiring. I hope you enjoyed this video. I should just varnish this keyboard to let you all know how it looks, right? Before we get into the keyboards, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Even though I'm obviously no longer schooling, I still want to learn. Skillshare provides thousands of classes from business to video production to web development so that you can keep on learning. The teachers on the platform are experienced professionals in their own fields and the classes they offer are broken down into small bite-sized lessons that I can learn at my own pace. There's this Sean Dalton class on iPhone portrait photography because as a boyfriend, I need to take photos for Ashley. My girlfriend. I know how to use a DSLR camera but with a phone camera, I take quite terrible pictures. Sean Dalton goes through step by step from functions to turn on and off to maximize the phone potential to take photos, to composing your photos and editing your photos on the phone itself. With Dalton's class, I can finally become a proper Instagram boyfriend. If you're a fan of learning, sign up for Skillshare using the link in my description to receive one month free trial to Skillshare Premium.